Uh, morning, ladies and gents. Sorry about that delay. Something wasn't happy with the uh, 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 teams, but we're off and running. Uh, my name is Simon Brown. I'm not the expert here today. I'll be leading the discussion. We've got uh, dozens of experts to help us uh, understand actively managed certificates, relatively new on the JSC, maybe a little over a year since we saw the first few listed. Standard Bank being fairly active in that space uh, and got a fair bunch already on the market. Uh, I've got a bunch of experts who are going to help us understand, uh, most notably uh, Nick and Andrew from Standard Bank. Uh, Jensen, everyone there, you can hear me well. You are alive and good. All good, thanks, Simon. All well, thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, let's then kick this off. Uh, folks in the webcast, if, if you've got questions, you can drop them in to the Q&A. We've certainly got some time for questions, so don't, no worries about that. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, Nick, Andrew, I want to start off at a high level. What is an actively managed certificate? We've got other sort of products on the JSC. Of course, we've also got non-exchange listed. I'm thinking Unit Trust, for example. And let's kick off with what's an AMC uh, and, and, and uh, how does it at a high level work? Cool. Um, so, Simon, I'll, I'll take that question. Uh, so I think you you defined the acronym, which uh, seems to be something that the JSC loves to have. But an app, the acronym is actively managed certificates, um, and I think probably the best way to describe it is that um, Standard Bank and all the banks have what we call a a note program, um, and essentially what that allows us to do is to issue notes on. The JSC, which obviously then trade and settle uh, in this particular instance through uh, straight and into your BDA account. Um, and notes issued by the bank are issued under Section 19 of the JSC listing requirements, uh, which is actually uh, the debt securities uh, section of the listing requirements. Um, and essentially, what an AMC does in its sort of simplest form is it's an instrument that is listed by a bank that references a portfolio of assets. And that note is then unitized and traded and settled through the JSC where the management or the constitution of that portfolio of assets is determined by a FSP or a, a, a JSC member that allows uh, that member to instruct Standard Bank as to how to constitute that portfolio. It's an important point here, and I mean, it makes perfect sense. And I think the key point, it's on the JSC, it's settled, you buy it as you would anything else by your normal JSC account. A lot of folks might think it, it's kind of like a structured note, and in some ways it is, but but fundamentally at its heart, it is, it is quite different to a structured note. They would typically have uh, uh, you know, a, a defined a fairly short period, couple of years. They'll have a, a fairly strong theme. Uh, there's the ESG one that just has recently uh, been promoted. It is different to a structured note in in, in many senses. Um, so I mean, I think if you're going to draw parallels to the structured note world, I mean, I think if we get rid of the noise of of all the acronyms, a structured yeah. note is the same as what we would call an ETN or exchange traded note. Um, and a AMC is issued in exactly the same manner, right? I think that the key point that we need to focus on today is that in the past, structured notes have kind of sat in the following category, is that they have a defined reference asset and they have a defined payoff. So if you look in the work, in the realm of structured products, there's some form of capital guarantee, and then there's a reference asset, right? There, there are many notes that are, for want of a better word, that have been listed that um, will track an index or they'll track a thematic, but the constitution of that is fixed. I think the key differentiation between those and what we call AMCs is that the constitution of the underlying portfolio or reference assets will change and it will change at the discretion of an authorized asset manager. Yeah, and, and that's the key. I think that I like that. That that's the the key point. And I want to come back to that in the the the, the AMC space, the actively managed certificates. Uh, you mentioned issued by a bank. Where does 
Standard Bank fit into this process? As, as, as part of the understanding is, is that it is, it, the phrase is often bandied around, it's issued off the Standard Bank balance sheet. Where does Standard Bank fit in the process? Um, so let's break that into two parts, if, if I think I understand your question. Um, mm -hmm. the, I'll deal with the second part with, with what I assume is what the process looks like to bring in an AMC to market. But what is a very, very important distinction, and I, and I think that, um, as I believe most of the audience today is, is in the asset management yep. industry, is that you know previously we've had different instruments in which asset managers can deliver their product. Um, and in the past, it started as sort of seg mandates. Um, then we moved to the collective investment scheme. And ultimately, this is, I, I guess, the next generation of the ability to offer that uh, asset management service in the form of a, um, an actively managed certificate, right? The, the real key difference here is that if we compare this to the realm of a collective investment scheme, um, I think everyone in this audience is very well versed in terms of what that structure looks like. You know, you've essentially got a trust. The trust is holding the assets uh, on behalf of the beneficiaries, and the be beneficiaries are ultimately the unit holders. In this instance, you have a bank that is issuing a debt instrument, and that debt instrument is issued on the main board, right? It is not equity per se, right? It is a debt instrument that entitles the holder of that note to the economic benefits of the reference portfolio, right? And that I think is a very key distinction is that there is an element of exposure to Standard Bank or any other bank that issued this note in the sense that you are um, a debt holder, albeit senior and secured, but you are a debt holder in holding that instrument. So I think, yeah. does that address sort of yes. point one? 100%. Um, then point two, the process to, to sort of bring an AMC to market is relatively simple. And I'm quite sure that we'll go into the intricacies of some of the amendments to what both the FSCA and the JSC are proposing to section 19. But let, let's just break it down in its simplest formats, right? We would have an asset manager that would approach Standard Bank, and that asset manager would say, we would like to have an AMC listed to which we wish to be the manager. Um, in that process, what we would then require is one evidence of the regulatory approval that they have under their FSP license, right? Two, we would ask that asset manager um, ultimately to define what the mandate would be to which they would manage that AMC. So that's very much akin to when you go to the FSCA, you, you know, there's a universe of equities, bonds, et cetera, to which they can manage. Many of the asset managers will have that license in some way, shape or form where they're managing a CIS or, or, or a mandate. We then take that, that mandate is then transpired or transposed into a universe of acceptable assets Right, so whether it's equities or it's bonds, it's multi-asset strategy, then that is then um, put into what we call a pricing supplement, right? And that pricing supplement is then sent to the JSC for approval. Uh, once the JSC approves that pricing supplement, we then as Standard Bank essentially run what is akin to an IPO process. So there'll be an issuance of notes that go in the market. Those notes will then settle through the BDA system where the asset managers, clients, or other portfolio will subscribe through that um, RPO process. That'll settle through straight. And then in the life of it, which we will get to, there's obviously a market making ability where you can be bid and offer. But that is essentially, in its essence, how we bring a AMC to market, depending on all sorts of iterations in terms of strategy, what they're looking to do. That process can be as little as two weeks. Uh, it can be longer. Um, and the reason for that is that obviously there's um, a, a process of uh, checks and balances that the JSC and potentially the FSCA have to be involved in. Gotcha. Okay, that, 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 that two weeks is, is, is quick. 
quick, quick. You, you mentioned the FSP uh, who's approaching the likes of yourselves, needs regulatory approval. This is not special approval to be an MC. I mean, they would obviously need, and I imagine it's sort of the category licenses and the like, they need to have uh, the, the current authorities to, to essentially uh, manage client money, and in, in, in this case, in a fund. Correct. The, the 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 you talk around a thematic and 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 I know some of your your notes there are some fairly strong sort of thematic themes as Standard Bank I mean could we just have a, a general AMC I I I looking at investing in in top forty stocks or the like or, or do, are you looking for strong thematics in in terms of the the the, the underlying methodologies I mean I, th I think without selling other parts of the bank or other banks. You know, <laughs> if, if, if the intention was to just buy an index, and let's, let's take the simplest index being the top 40. Um, sure. You know, that product exists already. So you can have that product in some way, shape or form through a unit trust, or you can have that product as it stands today in what we would call an ETF. Agree? I think that the premise behind this product and or regulation, if we go all the way back to our engagements with the JSC and or client demand, is that all of AMCs are actually a, a huge product in Europe. Um, and their role and purpose in Europe is very much as an alternative or another form of portfolio management tool for regulated asset managers. So I think for us, the, the AMC product, the, the offering that Standard Bank is giving, is akin to saying that it, it is best suited for an active strategy. What does that look like? You know, that's up to the asset manager. Is it, is it stock picking? Is it asset allocation? Is it portable alpha? All of those things. But I think the underlying point is that you're looking for a discretionary manager here as opposed to an indexation product. And in terms of, of assets, I mean, obviously equity, I imagine bonds, and, and certainly from looking at, at, at the AMCs really listed by yourselves, uh, local and or offshore. Um, so, so again, I think we've got to go back to the framework in which we work in it, right? And that is, that is quite, um, <laughs> it's evolving quite quickly. So being very kind to our stakeholders and those being banks, the regulator in the form of the FSCA uh, and the JSC is that I think when AMCs first started, there was an idea and, and there, there was call it, um, regulation in terms of that. Uh, I'm sure that most of the managers on the call today will be well versed in the fact that there are proposals to amend Section 19 with specific reference to uh, AMCs. And that will include a whole lot of other things. Um, and I think that's just an evolution of often we have an idea of something and then practicality sets in. And then as we move through the, the course of time, it becomes, you know, uh, it, it evolves. As it currently stands, what is permissible is that it, any asset that's referenced that has an observable price. So by way of example, listed equities, uh, bonds or listed bonds, um, to some degree listed derivatives, um, the same for ETFs, commodities. There is a case to be made and certainly uh, an approach to be made to the JSC that inclusive of that would be um, collective investment schemes that publish daily pricing. Then if we move into the realm of offshore, the same asset class category. So anything that's observable, inclusive of uses. And and you mentioned then derivatives, because that's going to be my next question is, could this include derivatives perhaps for 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 uh, uh, hedging or, or downside protection, uh, or, or perhaps for, for good old fashioned gearing? They have an observable trust. There are a bunch trading on, 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 on the JSC. They could be included into the, the strategy and ultimately the AMC. So I'm going, to, I'm going to caveat this with in theory. Um, and, and the only reason for that is that uh, one of the proposed amendments in terms of uh, the changes to Section 19 and AMCs is that right in the beginning, the, the, the regulation was quite specific around the percentage of derivatives that could be used. 
Um, that has subsequently in the proposal been removed. Um, and one would read that, you know, certainly in our engagements with the FSCA and the JSC, is there's a move to align um, what AMC's regulation would be in that space where you have gearing and derivatives to be akin to what the regulation would say for a uh, RIF under um, Board Notice 52. So I think just for the benefit of everyone on this call, there are AMCs that are, are able to use derivatives, they are able to use uh, leverage. Whilst we're in this juncture, while we work through this, uh, both ourselves and the JSC's view is that we would take any proposal to the JSC and the FSCA and see what the uh, you know approvals or opposition would be. But most of them that are akin to section, uh, you know, a daily price ref is, is pretty much where we've been steered at, at what the regulators look to achieve. Gotcha. Okay. Now that makes some sense. From a, a, a financial and, and operational criteria, I mean, obviously you are working with a FSP already. They've already got processes and systems in place. That is a, a requirement of their FSP license. So that will be in, in place. Is there more that that that, that Standard Bank would look beyond the, the, the regulatory and uh, FSP requirements in terms of operational, perhaps even in terms of financial? Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to let Andrew speak for the operational piece because, I mean, essentially, you have the legal construct and then operation, the entire business is, is really run through our prime broking business. Um, what is really important is that because Standard Bank or any bank is the issuer of the note, and we have a, for want of a better word, a legal obligation under the, under the listings requirement to publish not only the pricing supplement, as well as the net asset value, but once a month, we need to put out a fact sheet um, that basically says that no, dis probably, I'm not gonna say no dissimilar, almost identical to what one would have to do in the CIS world, which shows positions, NAV, TRs, et cetera. Now that obligation sits with ourselves and we share that obviously with the asset manager, through the administration, but that, that is really our legal obligation to ensure that that portfolio is managed in line with what we've told the public through the pricing supplement. Um, from an operational perspective, obviously Standard Bank through prime operational excellence. So I'll, I'll let Andrew deal with that. Yeah, really well. thank you, Nick. Um, so, so from an operational perspective, it's manage the five prime breaking desk, uh, which manages two components, both the trade execution as well as the post-trade services. In terms of post-trade, what we do is uh, essentially we have a data warehouse, we have a standard suite of reports. Any activity during the day is captured into that data warehouse and on a T plus one basis, our clients get a standard suite of reports which cover everything from their call accounts to their P&L activity um, and, and, and the NAV. In addition to that, we have um, in anticipation of regulation, appointed a third party administrator to independently validate that NAV. Um, and that is just as a value add service, um, uh, anticipating what we think where the regulation will go. Um, so the, the, in terms of pricing, the portfolios are refreshed or repriced three times a day um, in line with uh, our obligations to, to make a market as well. So we price pre-market uh, around 12 noon or slightly before and pre-auction close. And those are the, the prices at which we deal. In terms of dealing the actual units in the AMC, we show an on-screen price, 50 basis points either side of the actual price as an indication. If anyone who wants to trade units in the fund, it's as simple as calling their broker up. Their broker will either send us a Bloomberg or an email or get on the phone uh, to give, give uh, for us to make a real price. And we strike the, the trade at the real price. And uh, the, it settles through the normal T plus three process uh, akin to an equity on the JSC in your BDA or your broking account. Yeah. And then, Andrew, if we stay with the operational for a moment, I mean, if I'm the FSP and I've got 
the, the Simon Super Fund. Um, I'm, I'm not having to sweat all of that activity, money flowing in or out. In essence, I say to you, here's the portfolio which we're looking at with weightings, as and when that changes, I'll update accordingly. But uh, you're managing that as Standard Bank in, in, on, on your side operation. Exactly. All you, all you are doing is obviously managing the risk and portfolio construction and sending us trade instructions to uh, amend or, or, or rebalance the reference assets in that portfolio. Gotcha. Uh, market making, I mean, you've alluded to this already. The market making is being managed by uh, yourselves. Again, that's not my stress. I mean, in essence, the FSPs, key well uh, f their function is 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 managing the the reference portfolio and deciding what it is all the stress of market making uh those sort of issues those are all happening on the the center bank side exactly right uh minimum amounts i mean or, or, you know, is is there minimum amounts does does it does i need do i need to precede it do i need to bring uh, uh capital and or uh, clients so, so you do. Um, our minimums are essentially 25 million brand started AMC. We do give you some grace to raise initial assets for a few months. Uh, and if you don't reach that hurdle, then we'll start charging you as if you're a 25 million rand fund. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, drop them in the Q&A box. I uh, see one coming through from uh, Rudy. Uh, must all trading of underlying assets be done via Standard Bank? I think the answer to that is going to be yes. Absolutely, yes. Cool. Um, and, and, and another question we were looking at, and it, it's, it's, it's going back a bit. Um, obviously, the, we, we have, we've got to the process. We have gone through the whole uh, 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 regulations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the FSP is then obviously, and I, I, they, they, you know, this is now their AMC in many senses. They manage the reference portfolio, um, and therefore they are free to market uh, to their clients and, frankly, to wider as well. It's now a JSC product. Uh, a question coming through, uh, and then it just vanished. Let me quickly get back to that. Uh, talk uh, costs and uh, tax efficiencies. Uh, talk around tax from from. And if there's there's I suppose in one sense the one tax implication is me the investor who's bought the AMC. That's going to be normal tax as you would anything else that you bought on the JSC. And chat to your accountant regarding that. Uh, talk around uh, tax efficiencies within the, the AMC? Sure. Uh, again, uh, Nicholas, <laughs> with all the caveats that we, we obviously as a bank cannot give uh, tax advice, but 100%. I think if we go back to the original conversations between ourselves, the JSC and the FSCA, you know, the comparable is that you've got, um, not that it's completely defined, but you've got the, the realm of the CIS and, and there's treatment in terms of what happens in the CIS. In the construct of an AMC, remember that it will not remember that legally, those are the assets that have, the bank has issued a note and against that note, there's a promised obligation and then we go purchase those reference assets. So the way in which that's uh, accounted for in terms of how the NAV is calculated is that what we do is that that note currently will make no distributions. So if you think about it, you've got a portfolio manager who will be buying assets and potentially selling assets. Mm -hmm. In that, there'll be realized and unrealized gains as well as potentially dividends earned and or income earned. But because those assets sit on the balance sheet of the bank, the tax treatment that is different and hence what we do is the calculation of the unit price is a NAV, there is no distribution and all, in, or, or call it all income or proceeds are then reinvested into the portfolio. So by way of example, after fees, right, any dividends received, income received, or uh, realized gains needs to be reinvested into the NAV. So it's essentially treated in the same way you would have a roll-up fund in the international markets of a USIT or an AMC. And then on redemption, right, there will be a difference in NAV, and as you very correctly uh, pointed out, that one would have to go to their tax advisor, but yeah. that would be the principle. 
couple of questions coming from Leonardo, coming from Jacques and others, uh, particularly about the, the initial funding. And, and uh, the one question is, can you seed with existing assets? Does it need to be cash? Uh, or could you do a, a section 42 transfer into the AMC? Okay. So no, you can't do a section 42 transfer in any way, shape or form. And the reason for that is section 42 uh, is, a, is, is essentially governed under the Tax Act for equity, and there's a specific carve-out for CISs, right? This is a note that is issued by a bank. It is a debt instrument, so Section 42 is not permissible. Uh, in terms of Leonardo's question, you know, if it's pertaining to Section 42, there's going to be a realisation. But what we have seen is, you know, investors have then obviously sold uh, S assets into the note, and then the note is subscribed in the net cash flow. But in that process, you will have a realization of the transfer or sale of assets. It, it, it cannot fall under uh, a Section 42. Just gotcha. in terms of fees, Simon, I noticed there are a few questions on fees. Yeah, is coming. So, so there's obviously the, the standard bank fee for listing and managing, which is uh, the 25 basis points. Uh, the, the manager would naturally charge a fee. We've seen everything from about 40 basis points to 125 basis points. And then there's also execution commission embedded in the trading fees for trading the units of the re reference assets. Those are the three fee lines. In terms of how the fees work is they accrue daily and capitalize monthly or quarterly depending on the FSP manager's uh, uh, preference. Um, some of the other questions. Um, oh, the issuance, I think it's only cash. So we would typically issue 100 million rands worth of units. And then as as persons subscribe to that, they issued it 1,000 rand per unit. And then obviously depend thereafter, depending on the NAV. Question coming um, through. Yeah. I just see one from uh, Adrian. Uh, so just in terms of the difference between that, uh, active ETF and an AMC. Obviously, Standard Bank does do uh, active ETFs, uh, but they don't fall within this mandate. And remember, there are very different instruments in, in the manner in which they're treated. So an ETF has got its own section on the JSE, and an ETF is still a collective investment scheme. So you are more than welcome to have an active ETF um, but essentially what you've done is you've taken a collective investment scheme and you've listed it. So for those on the call that are well versed in the cost of a CIS, you're still incurring what is a CIS. All you've done now is added it to the JSC piece. You do not have that restriction under an AMC because an AMC is not CIS and hence we do not need to conform to the costings and the structure of a CIS. CIS. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Uh, Tyler's asking for contact details. I will drop Andrew and Nick email in the chat uh, in a moment. Uh, another question uh, from Cameron Singh. Can you comment on the use of AMCs to create foreign capacity? Um, Cameron, if, if I understand your question, I think what we're saying is that on the JSC, under our bank issuance, what we are able to do is issue a note that uh, uses the bank's macro prudential limits, which then allows that note per se to be referenced offshore. So by way of example, if you had an active manager who wanted to buy a portfolio of US equities, what we are able to do is issue a note that is subscribed for in RANDs, the RANDs come in, those go into the bank's balance sheet, we convert those to dollars through our prudential limits, and then buy the, the portfolio offshore. As an individual, a company or a trust, the subscription of that note does not in any way, shape or form uh, impact your foreign allowance because it is an inward listed instrument. Yeah. Obviously, if other CISs purchase that, then there are other uh, implications under board notice 90 in terms of book through principles, et cetera, um, that, that you would have to account for foreign exposure. Cool. Uh, I've dropped Andrew and Nick's uh, emails into the, the chat. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming 
grew. I, I, just a, 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 a loss closing. I mean, back to be managed certificates, as I said, a relatively new concept on, 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 on iExchange. But my sense from them, I'm certainly from what we've seen out there, uh, this is going to become, I mean, if I go back to the first ETF 24 years ago, Satrix 40 listed an ETF, and then we had absolutely nothing for five years. But this is a, a, a sector that's growing faster, and I think we're going to see a lot more coming. Is that a fair comment? We've certainly seen some innovative uh, uh, mandates and thematics coming through. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've seen multiple use cases. Some are using them as a distribution mechanism. Some are using them as a operational efficiency vehicle. Some are using them as a building block into alternative vehicles. Um, so yeah, it has multiple use cases, and actually they they more and more are are sort of coming to the fore as as dialogue with clients evolve. So what we would employ you to do is if you've got any ideas or thoughts, is reach out to Nick or I, and uh, we can talk through uh, to the best of our ability your idea and whether it's implementable or, or uh, an AMC. Uh, is the right vehicle for for your particular use case. Question coming through about the size, and I actually have some data which I saw just the other day. I'm quickly calling it up. Uh, at this point in time, 50 uh, actively managed certificates as of September, rather, uh, on the JSE. Uh, that, yep, so it's 50, which has grown from uh, 44 recently, and I can't see how much capital is in it, but certainly it is, uh, um, no, nah, I'm not getting, in, ah, there we go, no, nah, I'm not getting an accurate number on the value for capital, but it, it is certainly uh, uh, growing and, and 50 is a good chunky number. Um, questions in the Q&A tab, are there any coming through there? Uh, there are some, my bad. Uh, yeah, Tyler, we've got you some contact details in that regard. Uh, apart from a question from Johan, apart from single line exposure, in a portfolio difference between a product like this and old, hold, holding a portfolio of equity swaps? So some, uh, I can't see the... Uh, uh, apart from the line exposure, the difference between an AMC and just holding a portfolio of equity swaps? Um, yeah, look, I mean, I think that if you trade it the line of equity swaps with us. Um, I'm assuming those swaps are either OTC or CFD, which are ultimately the same product. Uh, you know, your exposure to the bank from a, a credit and a, a ranking perspective is the same, but I think the construct about the portfolio management, administration, and unitization are completely different. So if you want to trade a portfolio of swaps with us, it's looking and feeling like a unitized either CIS, if you're able to do that, or a set mandate, whereas this is the complete offering. It's essentially a unitized product housed in one listed instrument that has portfolio administration, customs, fees, and NAV publication. Uh, really asking a fair point. Uh, do MCs exist in perpetuity, or do they have a shelf life? Do they have, an, in essence, an expiry date? So. At the moment, we issue, you can issue up to 15 years with an option to extend. One of the proposed amendments to um, the AMCs that the JSC are considering is to make it perpetual. Ah, okay. Okay, that is important. Uh, a question from Young Monkeys. He's asking, and, and we've kind of touched on this already, do trustees of a CIS look at the AMC? Do they look at the exposure on a see-through basis? Um, and or, or do they? How do the a, a, a CIS trustee look at a at a at a at an a actively managed certificate? Um, so Simon, the JSC hosted a few weeks ago, um, I suppose, a symposium with uh, the FSCA, um, and it was predominantly around board notice ninety, mark, which is essentially what that question is pertaining to. So basically. In a, in a nutshell, uh, certainly from the FSCA's perspective, that AMCs are permissible within a board notice 90 compliant portfolio. And then 
it would be at the discretion of the trustees as to the look-through principles. So essentially, all of the the you know regulations that govern board notice nine in terms of how much of an instrument you can hold, which is now certainly here you are holding a bank instrument. Uh, the underlying constitution of that portfolio, um, asset allocation to that portfolio, all of that would apply. But again, that is. That is at the discretion, exactly as it is today, of a trustee of a CIS. Gotcha. Uh, Donna quoted some numbers from CityWire. Uh, new capital in the first three quarters, 2.9 billion got coming into actively managed uh, certificates. Um, Tyler is asking if you've seen uh, interest from investors, not just asset managers. Uh, absolutely. So I think majority of our use cases we've seen to date are retail investors purchasing uh, AMCs, which are we've listed, um, uh, wealth managers, boutiques, discretionary managers, are all running these portfolios. Uh, Rudy, you're asking if all trading of underlying assets be done via Standard Bank. We chatted on that a moment ago. Uh, the answer to that is yes. And I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. Uh, I'm going to drop the emails into the chat again for Nick and Andrew. Um, a question just popped in there from uh, Brandon. Will this be debt within Reg 28? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, Gent, uh, Nick, uh, uh, Andrew, appreciate your time. S some closing remarks from you, uh, if you've got. Otherwise, we will wrap it. We seem to be running low on questions, and we are hitting times. Cool. I, mean, I think the the only thing that we would say is that uh, this is a very exciting offering. Um, I think that we, in its infancy, and what we would ask of the asset management community is that you engage with ourselves. I think that certainly everything in all our discussions with the JSC and the FSCA is that, you know, whilst we wait for certainty in certain areas, um, because this is an evolving product, rather let's engage with the JSC on things that you're looking to achieve, um, because I think that also helps frame where the industry wants to go, as opposed to waiting for regulation to guide us. Gotcha. Uh, Tali, you're asking only uh, JC instruments and the AMCs. Nope, you, as, as we talked on earlier, <clears throat> anything that has a reference price is able to put in. Uh, we'll leave it there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a horrid uh, head cold, but managed to uh, keep my head working. Uh, Andrew Kerens, uh, Nick Pretzer, really appreciate the time today. Everyone who attended, we appreciate your time. Uh, this has been recorded. Uh, it will be available and you can again contact uh, myself, Andrew, Nick or, or Bonolo to get a copy of the recording if like. Everyone, appreciate your time today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.